welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the section 1 of the advanced hire paper from 2021. A link to this paper is in the description box below. Question 1 is testing your knowledge of the quantum rules. The Earth by principle is the building up principle. This means that you build up the electrons from the lowest energy to the highest energy. You can do this using this table below. We have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d and 4f. However, they do not fill in this order. If we take diagonal lines from the top right, we have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p and so on. This means that the 4s will fill before the 3d. This means that for potassium, it will fill in order for C. Question 2 is looking at quantum numbers for oxygen. First, we'll look at the electron configuration for oxygen, which is 2, 6. If we write this out as full electron configuration, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. An outer electron is in the 2p4. This has n equals 2, l equals 1 because it's a p-shell, and ml equals minus 1, 0, and plus 1. This means that the electron cannot be in l equals 0. For question 3, we need to start by writing out the electron configuration for a chromium atom. In its ground state, a chromium atom has 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1 and 3d5. This is because there is an extra stability of having a half-filled d shell. If we then draw out the orbital box notation, we can see that all of the electrons are paired up until the end of 3p6. After this, we have six unpaired electrons in the 4s and the 3d, which is d. For question four, we're looking at acids. If we write out an equation for a weak acid of HA in equilibrium with H plus and A minus ions, the expression for Ka will be H plus times A minus divided by HA. This means that for a larger Ka, you have a more acidic substance. Therefore, X is the least acidic substance in the table and Z is the most acidic substance in the table. So we can now see clearly from the table that X is more basic than Y, so A is not the answer. We can also see that X is less acidic than Z. We can see that Y is more basic than Z, therefore C is the answer. And we can also see that Y is more acidic than X. For question 5, treat this as if it's a Hess's law calculation. You've been given two equations and an overall equation to aim for. We have the two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. We need to know what we need to do to each equation. For equation 1, we have the carbon in the correct place. However, we have two carbons, not one. So we need to multiply by a half. For equation 2, this needs to be flipped over, but we also need to half this equation. This means that we're going to take the values and we're going to multiply equation 1 by a half and equation 2 by negative a half. This then gives the value of negative 67.5a. Question 6 is testing your knowledge of definitions. The enthalpy of formation of a substance is the enthalpy change associated with the formation of one mole of a substance from its elements in standard states. If we have a look at each of the equations, we can see that for equation 1, although the elements are in standard states, we're making two moles of the product. Therefore, this cannot be the answer. The same applies for answer B. For answer C, we have the elements in the standard states and we're creating one mole of the substance. For answer D, bromine is not in its standard state as it should be a liquid. Therefore, the answer is C. For question 7, we need to take each of the reactants in turn and compare what happens when we double their concentration. If we have a look at the BrO3-, we'll compare experiments 1 and 2, and we can see that the rate will double. This means we have order 1. For Br-, we're going to compare experiments 2 and 3, and there we can see that the rate also doubles. This means that this will also be order 1. For H+, we're going to compare experiment 1 and experiment 4. The rate doubles twice for this. This means that we have order 2 for the H plus ions. Having a look in the table and matching up our answers, we can see that this is answer B. For question 8, 
For question 8, we're looking at graphs obtained for a reaction that's zero order with respect to x. If the reaction is zero order with respect to x, this means that the reactant will have no effect on rate. Therefore, we can eliminate answers A and B because they look at rate. We're left then with looking at the change in concentration of x over time. As the reaction proceeds, x will get used up and therefore this will be D. For question 9, we have the overall reaction and the rate equation. The rate equation represents the rate determining step, or the slowest step in the reaction. You have the two reactants in the rate equation and a 2 for the P, which means that both of the two are being used within the rate determining step. This means the equation for the rate determining step will be 2P plus Q to give an intermediate X. Therefore, we can eliminate A and C from the answers. We're left with answers B and D. The rate determining step is the slowest step, therefore the answer will be B. In question 10, we have a reaction. This is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. OH- is a negative ion and acts as a nucleophile. The other reactant is a haloalkane. Let's draw this out in full so we can see the structure. Once we have this drawn out in full, it's clear to see that we have a secondary haloalkane. Therefore, the answer is A. For question 11, we're looking for a reaction involving homolytic fission. This means the reaction needs to involve free radicals. In A, we have an addition reaction, which involves ions. In B, we're substituting one of the hydrogen atoms for bromine, which is a free radical substitution. In C, we have nucleophilic substitution, which involves ions. In D, we have electrophilic substitution involving ions. Question 12 is looking at the bonding in hydrocarbons. We're looking for the substance with the fewest sigma bonds. Sigma bonds are all single bonds and also one of the bonds within a multiple bond. Let's have a look at each of the compounds. We can draw them out and count up how many sigma bonds there are. In hexane, we have C6H14. All of the bonds within hexane are sigma bonds. This means that we have 19 sigma bonds within a hexane molecule. For hex one ene we have C6H12. We have one pi bond within the molecule and the rest of the bonds are sigma bonds. This means that within this molecule we have 17 sigma bonds. In hex 1 we have C6H10. There are two pi bonds within hex 1 and the rest of the bonds are sigma bonds. We have 15 sigma bonds. In cyclohexane, we have C6H12. Although an isomer of hex 1 all of the bonds here are sigma bonds and we have 18. Therefore, hex 1 ion has the fewest sigma bonds. Question 13 is looking at an addition reaction. We need to know what Markovnikov's rule means to be able to answer this question. Markovnikov's rule will produce the most stable carbocation intermediate. In reality, this means that when you add HX across a double or triple bond, the hydrogen atom will add to the carbon which already has the most hydrogen atoms. If we apply this to this molecule, then the H will add on to carbon 1 and the Cl will add on to carbon 2. This will leave us with still a double bond and therefore we will have two chloropropene. Question 14 is looking at ester formation when using an acid chloride and an alcohol. In this process, we will lose HCl rather than water. Because we have a secondary alcohol, this will join on and will end up with a branch on the alcohol side of the ester. We need to take this into account when we look at the answers. Because we produce HCl and not water, we can eliminate answers A and B. We then need to have a look at the answers for the esters. You can see that we have CH3 branches on the alcohol side, which is C. For question 15, we need to compare the genetic equation that we've been given to the product that we have. We can then label the R1 to R4 on this molecule. On doing that, we can then see that R3 and R4 are attached to the nitrogen, so we can concentrate on the rest of the molecule. We can redraw out the product and put in R1 and R2. When we do this, we can see that we have a molecule of butanone, D. Question 16, we are trying to identify the different functional groups within the molecule. We can see a carbonyl here highlighted in pink. We do not have a carboxyl group. The hydroxyl is highlighted in red and we have a phenyl group highlighted in blue. Therefore, B is the answer. Question 17 is looking at NMR spectrum. 
Here we have ethoxyethane. The two CH3 groups are in the same environment as this molecule is symmetrical, as are the two CH2 groups. Therefore, there will be two hydrogen environments. If we have a look at the CH3 group, the next row carbon has two hydrogens, so if we use the M plus 1 rule, it will be a triplet. If we look at the CH2 group, the next row carbon has three hydrogens, so if we do 3 plus 1, we have a quartet, which is A. Question 18 is looking at the boiling points of amines. The lowest boiling point will be for an amine which is tertiary, as it will have the least amount of hydrogen bonding. A is primary as it has one carbon chain attached. B and C are secondary with two carbon chains attached, and D is tertiary with three carbon chains attached to the nitrogen. This will therefore have the least hydrogen bonding between molecules and the lowest boiling point. Question 19 is a problem solving question looking at synthesis. When you use iodomethane, you get ethane produced. Here we're going to use iodomethane and iodoethane. So we'll get a mixture of products. If two iodomethane join together, then you will produce ethane. If two iodoethane join together, then you'll produce butane. However, if iodomethane and iodoethane join, then you will get propane. This means we'll have a mixture of ethane, propane and butane within the final mixture, which is C. Question 20 is another question about reactions. We're looking for something which will react with lithium aluminium hydride. Lithium aluminium hydride is a reducing agent. This will react with aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids. Tollinger reagent is an oxidising agent. This will react with alcohols and aldehydes. Therefore, the reactant that we're looking for needs to be either a ketone or a carboxylic acid. Let's have a look at each of the answers. A is a ketone, this is propanone. B is an aldehyde, this is propanol. C is an ether, this is methoxyethane. And D is an alcohol, propanol. Therefore, A will react with lithium aluminium hydride to produce a secondary alcohol, but will not react with Tollens agent. Question 21 is testing your knowledge of empirical formula. Empirical formula is the smallest whole number ratio of the elements present within a compound. This means that the compounds have the same percentage mass of the elements present. However, one compound may have a larger multiple of the empirical formula for its actual formula. Therefore, they are not isomers of each other and do not have the same molecular mass or functional groups. For question 22, you need to use the information in the question to insert into the equation that is given. We put in the number for the Rydberg constant from the question. N1 is the level to which the electron falls, which is 2, and N2 is the level from which the electron is falling, which is 9. If we rearrange the equation for wavelength, then you get 3.83 times 10 to the minus 7, which is B. Question 23 is looking at an NMR spectrum. There is only one peak in the NMR spectrum, which means there must only be one hydrogen environment. Let's have a look at each of the molecules. For propane, we have CH3, CH2, CH3. This is a symmetrical molecule, but we will have two hydrogen environments. For propanol, we have CH3, CH2, and CHO. We will have three hydrogen environments. For propanone, we have CH3, CO and CH3. This is symmetrical and both hydrogen environments will be the same. For propanol, we have CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. We would have four hydrogen environments. For question 23, we're looking for the greatest number of negatively charged ions. For the first one, we're going to calculate concentration times volume, volume being in litres, and multiply by the number of negative ions in the equation, which is 2. For B, we're going to do the same, however, the number of negatively charged ions in the formula is only 1. For C, we again have two negatively charged ions within the formula. And for D, we only have one negatively charged ion in the formula. This means that the substance with the greatest number of negatively charged ions is zinc nitrate, A. In question 25, you are trying to calculate the energy required to break one mole of bonds. You've been given the energy required to break one bond, so you need to multiply this by Avogadro's constant, which you can find in your data book. If you multiply the value given by Avogadro's constant, then you will get 193.84 kilojoules per mole. 
If you then compare this to the bond enthalpy table in the data book, you will find that this is approximately equal to bromine, which is 194. Thank you for watching my video. Hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards and updates on new videos. Bye for now.